Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to RBL Bank Limited Q2 FY25 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. R. Subramanya Kumar, Managing Director and CEO of RPL Bank. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Kumar. Thank you very much, ma'am. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> and thank you for joining us for a discussion on our bank's financial results for the second quarter <coughs> and half year of the financial year 2025. We have uploaded the results along with the presentation on our website, and I hope you have had the chance to go through it in detail ahead of this call. I am, as always, joined on this call by Rajiv Ahuja and other members of our management team to address any questions that you have. I will spend the next few minutes talking to our progress on the broad-based parameters, after which Mr. Jaydeep will take you through the financial numbers in detail. First on macros. We are seeing secular growth in India's macroeconomic landscape, highlighted by the recent GDP projection as the range of 7.1 to 7.2 percentage in 24-25. We believe growth continues to be supported by a strong private consumption and rising investment levels, and with the recent changes in monetary stance, we expect liquidity conditions to improve facilitating credit growth across sectors. In FI 2023, we have laid out our vision for 24-26, covering our target growth of 18 to 20% in advances and deposits, 50% plus share of granular deposits, retail mix of 60 to 65%, PPOP growth higher than advances growth, and the range of 1.3 ROA by FI 26. We continue to be confident of achieving this. We have articulated this before, and we continue to strongly propagate our overall thought process of looking at our growth in terms of individual business segments, plus the synergetic one RBL alpha that we are in the process of executing. On individual businesses, I have been talking about Retailization of our assets and liabilities, and the story is born out of the numbers itself over the last two years. We have seen secured retail assets grow from approximately 10,000 crores in September 2022 to 23,000 crores now in September 24. Similarly, retail secured disbursements during this period has grown from approximately 600 crores per quarter in September 2022 to approximately 2,300 crores per quarter in September 2024. Our liabilities growth has been robust, with the granular deposits growing 22% OUOY, while total deposits have also grown 20% in the last year. Importantly, our average current account balances have also grown well at 22% OUOY, led by both branch banking and our corporate relationships. On wholesale banking, we have reimagined our approach and now seeing results. Our wholesale lending business now runs largely self-funded, focuses on well-rated clients, and the commercial segment specifically is targeted towards mid-sized corporates with whom we can have a holistic relationship. Overall, we have also materially debulked and de risked this business on cards. As we have said in the recent past, we are consolidating our position and looking to leverage the customer base for multiple products while focusing on improving the profitability of the business further. On microfinance, the momentum of growth is on a near term back burner as we face on ground issues with the borrower leverage borrower, multiple lenders, etc. But this appears to be settling for now. 
while the favorable liquidity and growth conditions have been beneficial to us we have also seen near term episodic impact related to the credit quality on a section of borrowing universe as unsecured credit for us mainly in credit card and microfinance i'll briefly touch upon the why of this aspect why what will be covered when we go through the financial numbers in case of both credit card and microfinance business it is notable that when compared with the comparable peers we still continue to maintain higher collection efficiencies across buckets while credit card slippages have largely been on account of the impact of change over of collection services from our large co-brand partner the benefit of this transition both in terms of our control and ability to manage this going forward far exceed this impact our analysis has clearly shown that this near term challenge on credit card slippage is a function of time and scale of this transition program and as negligible casual relation with the portfolio quality or customer profile that we have on cards we have also shared some data on the trends on collection in our presentation and uh, as we exited q2 we have seen the collection efficiency in the current and early buckets materially improving nearly back to the levels pre transition and this gives us a confidence that this pressure is largely behind us as we enter q3 on microfinance while the impact of this over leveraging has resulted in near term impact on asset quality the fundamentals of the business model remain robust we continue to have one of the lowest ticket sizes in this market our portfolio mix philosophy is focused on improving renewals on the existing borrowers while limiting exposure to only one loan per borrower we have also invested in remodeling our collection platform with digital tools advanced analytics and separation of the recovery teams to improve collection and many such efforts will hold us in good stead as we navigate the current condition while we are seeing improvement in efficiencies as we exited september and with the industry now adopting conservative lending practices our estimate would be to see this near term impact bottoming out through q3 as efficiencies trend upward and return to normal c to q4 in summary our bank has been seeing consistent growth in secured retail and the granular liabilities well above the overall growth of the bank in the near term there are challenges in credit cards and microfinance the credit cards is returning to normalcy and microfinance is trending to be, to improve performance we have also shared the progress of our journey in achieving our planned targets as you can see from our investor presentation on slide 22 the newer businesses are getting close to break even and as we come out of the near term stress we should be able to get back to our profitability journey our branch banking business continues to drive granular deposit growth with improving accretion what has been a challenging deposit environment we have been able to grow without really compromising on deposit rates while the general trend in the industry has been higher deposit rates at the same time our wholesale business continues to be steady profit generator with a multiple legs into liabilities trade cash foreign exchange etc reducing the dependency on asset led revenues we are quite pleased with our growth in the new city products and are now also walking down the path of affordable home loans and small and micro business loans which has better risk reward dynamics the proportion of the affordable housing and the small ticket secured business loans has reached 15% of our disbursement in housing and the business loan and this is expected to materially increase over the coming quarters the branches and self sourcing are increasing in proportion in secure retail especially in housing and business loan and this trend will improve the pace of profitability as we committed a couple of years ago we stabilized the bank and set it on the right course of growth 
with the new products moving towards a more diversified revenue generation path. Cards and microfinance are clearly a profitable business with a resilience to withstand the near-term challenges and will revert to a better earning profile. Wholesale banking continues to steadily improve its contribution to the bottom line and the newer businesses are improving their operating leverage. I will now hand over to Mr. Jaydeep to take you through the financial results. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, everyone. I will briefly uh, take, uh, take you all through the financial numbers. <clears throat> Advances for us grew 15% uh, year on year uh, and 1% sequentially. Within that, uh, the retail uh, book grew about 24% year on year and 2% sequentially. The slightly muted sequential growth in retail uh, was due to consciously reducing the growth in microfinance given the current industry conditions <clears throat> and the focus on collections. Uh, and as soon as we see collections come to a pre stress levels, we should be able to then push the pedal on growth, which we expect should take uh, anywhere between three to six months. <clears throat> Our uh, non-microfinance retail disbursements this quarter was 3,200 crores, which has grown 18% sequentially, so the focus continues really to, uh, to kind of give the thrust on secured loans, <coughs> which, is, uh, which is grown, uh, housing loans has grown at about 56% year on year, and uh, uh, rural vehicle loans, uh, which we introduced about two years back, has been growing at about 58% year on year. <coughs> Within wholesale, uh, given the fact that we should be focused on the right risk reward, commercial banking has been a focus, for, focus of growth, and that has seen a growth of 17% year on year, even though the overall wholesale book uh, was flattish sequentially, and I think that's conscious that we are uh, focused on uh, segments where we think we can get meaningful business opportunities with our clients. <clears throat> In credit cards, uh, one of the Parts that we started working about a year and a half back was to uh, reduce the dependence on a single large co-brand partner uh, and also uh, not only get the new co-brand partners but also have an organic path uh, for acquisition of customers both through branches and through direct distribution. Uh, happy to say that we are now inverted the proportions we have 65 to 70% uh, through DFL and 30-35% through all other uh, segments of origination, and now we have reversed that to almost 64% through uh, through direct sales and other co-grant partners, whereas BFL co-grant has now come down in terms of origination to about 36%. <clears throat> As we all know, we have recently also launched co-grant partner co-grant cards with the Indian Oil uh, Corporation, IRCPC, and PVS Finance. Uh, but the bigger focus is also on uh, self-distribution network. We now almo almost have 3,000 people on the street along with branches to be able to sell uh, directly uh, the RBL card. <clears throat> uh, on deposits, uh, we've been saying this for a while, focus is on granular deposit growth, and uh, we transparently disclose the deposit uh, contribution that is there from less than three crores, which is the definition of uh, retail deposits uh, for us. And that's now about 48.5% as a contribution to total deposits. <clears throat> and this has grown 22% year on year and 4% sequentially. Typically, the effort will be that this grows at a, uh, at a pace which is higher than the overall deposit growth. CASA has grown at about 13% year on year and 10% sequentially, led by corporate flows. Uh, I think we are holding relatively steady if you look at the daily average CASA. <clears throat> There is competition for deposits, as we all know, and, and uh, we, but we continue to see reasonably good traction on deposits, and I think we are quite comfortable in, in saying that uh, granular deposit growth and overall deposit growth is, is not really a constraint for us to get to our, our targeted growth on advances. <coughs> uh, branch banking-led deposits, which is essentially deposits sourced by branches, which will include some bulk deposits, that grew about 29% year on year and 7% sequentially and accounts for about 62% of our total deposits. LCR continues to be healthy at about 129% for the year, for the quarter. We've been in this range of 125 to 135% over the last 69 months. <clears throat> our NIA was up 9% year on year, but down 5% sequentially at 1,615 crores. Uh, NIA growth was impacted on two counts. One, uh, we had lower disbursements in microfinance this quarter, uh, and therefore the average book in microfinance was lower. 
And I think the bigger contribution was also from the fact that uh, we had a, a higher than trend slippages in both cards and microfinance, uh, which did cause interest reversals. Uh, also, from a sequential comparison, uh, you will recall that we had an additional 69 crore bump up in NIA in Q1 uh, uh, on account of tax refund. If I exclude that, we still have a, uh, almost a 35 to 40 basis point fall in sequential margins, uh, and, and largely because of the reasons I just alluded to. Uh, cost of funds have uh, largely stabilized uh, with cost of deposits at about 6.53% and cost of funds at about 657 uh, Hopefully, therefore, we uh, seem to be past the hump in terms of uh, largely uh, increasing trend in cost of deposits that we have seen. Uh, give or take, we should be in this range, few basis points here and there, before hopefully we start coming down, which of course will be a function of the uh, interest rate environment in the economy. <coughs> Um, our other income uh, has, has shown quite a lot of resilience. We are at, we are at 927 crores this quarter, 32% higher year on year and 15% sequentially. Uh, of this core fee income grew 21% year on year and 7% sequentially to 822 crores. We were of course also benefited by uh, favorable GSEC movements and some equity market related gains uh, in the non-core fee income growth. <coughs> Our total income as a result was up 17% year-on-year at 2,542 crores. Uh, in spite of pressure and margins, which we just discussed, we've been able to offset some of that through better fee income performance. Uh, our OPEX growth continues to be lower than advances on income, uh, as we've said in the past, and grew at 13% year-on-year, marginally lower sequentially actually to 1,632 crores. And as a result of it, our cost of income uh, was slightly better at 64.2 this quarter as against 65.7 last quarter. Our uh, pre-operating uh, profit uh, was at 910 crores, uh, up 24% year-on-year. Let me now come to asset quality. Uh, in terms of GNPA, uh, we are at 2.88% and NNPA at 0.79, uh, both marginally up sequentially. PCR continues to be healthy at 73%. Uh, our total net slippages was 817 crores, uh, and, and almost entirely was contributed by cards and microfinance. The so cards was about 606 crores, and microfinance at about 231 crores. So effectively, between wholesale and retail, was effectively mill. In fact, wholesale had a uh, had a had a uh, recovery uh, on a net basis, and therefore a negative slippage. <coughs> Our restructured advances also have come down to 0.38% against 0.44 in Q1 as we continue to see pay downs by customers. This is, of course, restructuring that happened during the COVID period. <coughs> uh, on provisioning, uh, uh, at an operating level, while we've seen uh, steady performance, we've seen higher, higher than normal provisioning, primarily because of slippages in cards and microfinance. As we've taken a total net provision on advances uh, of 662 crores this quarter. As a result of which, the credit costs came at about 80 basis points as compared to 59 basis points last quarter. Our net profit uh, for the quarter, therefore, is 223 crores, which is down 24% year on year. <coughs> Let me briefly also provide some details on asset quality trends in, in cards and microfinance, the two businesses which have seen some headwinds in this quarter. Uh, as I said, the entire provisioning of this quarter is, is, is due to increased slippages in cards and microfinance. Uh, all other businesses have negligible to nil uh, slippage and credit costs cumulatively. <clears throat> Starting with cards, uh, there has been an increased uh, impact on slippages in cards due to the, uh, which uh, Mr. Kumar alluded to, due to specifically in the BFL co-brand portfolio, as a result of the collection transition that we consummated in July uh, of, of this year. We have uh, We've actually shared some more color on the asset quality trends in the cards portfolio over the last six years, and this includes the split between the BFL portfolio, BFL co-brand portfolio, and the RBL, the non-BFL portfolio. Uh, if you look at slide 35, when you get a chance, the, it shows that the elevation of slippages and resulting trade costs has been on account of the collection transition. Uh, the RBL portfolio X BFL has held up very well and has seen marginally lower slippages in this period. However, in the BFL co-brand portfolio, we saw early trends last year which stabilized and then got impacted by the transition on collections in this quarter. 
the good thing is that uh, the flows into first bucket, which is a leading indicator of of, of slippages, have now come back to historical levels on cards, which we believe will continue and result in lower slippages from here on. We clearly expect slippages in cards to go down materially in Q3 and come back to uh, close to normalcy by the time we come to Q4. Given this, we don't see this as a portfolio concern. Uh, it is it is more peculiar to our kind of circumstances here. On microfinance, uh, our collection against current month demand uh, is basically current month uh, demand as a denominator and current month collections being the numerator is at 97.1% for the September end. While we are hopeful, while we were hopeful that we should touch 98% because we had seen this dip to 97% in August, we were hopeful of this touching 98% in September, but that hasn't happened. <clears throat> as some of the states saw a dip in collection owing to, owing to floods. Uh, specifically Bihar, which is, uh, as you know, would be around 30% of our portfolio. Uh, we have given a, given a trend on the collection efficiency in microfinance as well in our investor deck on slide 48. <clears throat> While we are better in September or August, we are still well below uh, May June levels on the current collection. States such as Rajasthan, Punjab, and Jharkhand, which were problematic earlier, have now turned around and have shown material upswing in collection performance. Uh, Bihar, which is our largest state, was also on course actually for bettering August uh, until last week of September when the impact of floods uh, restricted the movements in large parts of the state. Uh, we hope that this is kind of quickly changing in this month and we go back in Bihar, which, which will make a big difference to the portfolio if we go back to the 98% levels uh, by uh, sometime in October, November. <coughs> Uh, we continue to emphasize great focus on collections, especially in early buckets, and we've actually made some changes in the added manpower, uh, high dedicated teams now looking at uh, 30 plus and 60 plus, uh, given, the, given the current situation. The correlation we have seen with slippages is that customers with high leverage and borrowing from a large number of lenders has seen higher deterioration, though there is some deterioration even in the lower leverage customers and customers with lesser number of lenders. So, so while there is uh, there is higher impact, but there is impact even on the so-called normal customers in that sense. Unfortunately for us, we've been very, very guarded in the way we do business. Uh, we don't have more than one loan per borrower outstanding at any point in time. We don't do multiple loans to, uh, to borrowers. Uh, and therefore, why at the time of sourcing, uh, you know, we, we have the benefit of being able to select the kind of customers we want to onboard. But subsequent leverage to those customers is not something that is completely in our control. And, and therefore, uh, in that sense, I think the new Ensign guardrails which are coming in place, uh, and most lenders seem to be adopting it quite quickly, uh, should, uh, should therefore uh, improve the situation materially as we go forward. Uh, I will just want to remind uh, investors that we continue to hold contingent provision on cards and microfinance at 1% of the book. Uh, as of September, this is 283 crores. We haven't uh, utilized any of this. Uh, these were created for the purpose of mitigating adverse outcomes during portfolio downturn, and we will at some stage look to use the contingent buffer for provisioning as we see the situation on the ground improving. Uh, lastly, just a quick word on capital. Uh, our capital, including profits, was at uh, 15.92, uh, and our core equity tier one was at 14.19. Uh, and this was actually an improvement of almost 35 basis points sequentially, uh, which is normally we would guide uh, 15 to 20 basis points reduction uh, consumed by growth. Uh, I think there has been a combination of uh, the quality of growth coming through more uh, lower risk weighted assets. Uh, kind of businesses resulting in a uh, very low in increase in, uh, in consumption due to growth. And we've had some reduction in market risk and some reduction due to optimization that we've done on capital. So we are quite happy to say that we are at about almost 14.2 on core equity one. Um, uh, and, and, uh, but we will again, from a guidance standpoint, we will still say that we should, we should burn about 15 to 20 basis points capital uh, every quarter on a steady state. <coughs> So that's, uh, that's it from my side. Uh, with this, we will open the session for question and answers. So we'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. 
participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Rikin Shah from IIFL. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, so the first one is on cards. Uh, the credit card acquisition run rate has slowed down by 40% YOI to almost uh, 3.7 lakh uh, now. Uh, despite uh, new additions to the co-branded partnerships, uh, would you believe that this is a new acquisition run rate or can this further accelerate? Uh, that's the first one. Uh, second one is on MFI. Uh, the top three state exposures for us is materially higher than the peers and the industry. Bihar is one of that. Uh, what are the other two states uh, which constitute among the top three? And is there any diversification plan there? Uh, the third question is, uh, if you could you know, uh, give out some data around the percentage of customers uh, who have more than three to four lenders, uh, that would be helpful. Uh, and then uh, just a couple of data keeping questions, but you know, if you could respond to this question and then I'll just quickly ask some data related questions. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Again, on, on credit card acquisition, yes, uh, we've uh, kind of uh, consciously looking at uh, mining the portfolio much more than looking at just growth. I think uh, at a base of five and a half million customers, uh, we are now wanting to extract operating leverage. Uh, and we also had to uh, de-risk growth from uh, from our largest co-brand partner. Uh, the new co-brand acquisitions that you mentioned is relatively recent, and it will take some time for it to scale up. But broadly, I think we should be in the 10 to 15 lakh per annum or 12 to 15 lakh per annum new card acquisition, uh, and not the 20 plus lakh that we used to probably do in the past, given the fact that we were saving scale. Uh, I think we've reached a stage where we want to optimize the portfolio and uh, take the benefit of uh, mining this five and a half million customers for multiple products of the bank. So the focus is really uh, through a combination of uh, right acquisition and better mining of the existing base. Uh, on microfinance, uh, uh, besides Bihar, the next two states would be UP and uh, Rajasthan. Uh, and both of them have shown uh, improving uh, improving collection efficiency in September over June, September over August. Yeah, with regard to your question on diversification, we have a very clear cut plan which we uh, shared with all of you earlier before. And we also know that we have entered into some of the states where the microfinance per se is going, like the states like Tamil Nadu and Karnataka and South, plus Marissa and others. There we have already started uh, moving up, and it will take time for you to establish the branches and uh, the manpower and then it is a, it's a part of it. <clears throat> yeah, the other percentage of customers is multiple. Yeah, on, on uh, customers, if you look at like either leverage beyond 2 lakh or if you look at more than uh, uh, four lenders, including RBL, we are broadly in that 9 to 10% range of our customers. Got it. Thank you uh, for responding. And just a few uh, data keeping questions. Uh, on slide number 47, uh, you mentioned SMA 1 and 2 for your MFI portfolio. Uh, and even on slide 48 in the bottom chart, uh, there is SMA 1 2. Uh, so, what's the difference in the numbers between those two slides? That's number one. Uh, second, if you could uh, repeat the gross slippage and net slippage for individual segments, which was laid out in the opening remark, uh, that would be helpful. And lastly, uh, if you could just quantify the stock of uh, total uh, non-NPA related provisions, 283 is contingent provision, but in addition to that, any other restructured or standard provisions that we could carry, so the stock of that. That's all from my Thank you. Yeah, so on the first one, slide 47, because it's an industry comparison, it is as at June, which is unfortunately written in very small font on the bottom right. And the next one is only pertaining to RBL, and therefore, we have the luxury of being able to give you till September. Uh, industry data will come with a lag. The question on, sorry, was that clear enough? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, on, on, I mean, if I remember the numbers on next slippages, broadly we are at about 600 crores on cards and 220 crores on MFI, and that is pretty much the entire uh, provision on a 2.68. Yeah, on the gross levels, it will be about 630 crore in cards and about 240 in NFI. 
and uh, on NPA. Let's yeah, standard asset provisioning, which is regulatory required, which is 40 basis points, uh, and very small restructured provisioning should be about 500 crores. Perfect. Thank you very much for responding. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Mundra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for the additional disclosures. <laughs> sir, I wanted to check on uh, uh, OPEX growth. So, some of the questions have already been answered. Uh, OPEX growth, sir, um, this quarter staff cost has gone up, um, but the other OPEX, uh, the total OPEX is contained because other OPEX uh, has not moved much, uh, which could be because the business in some of the business uptake was relatively slow. Uh, but if you can, uh, uh, if you can, uh, you know, uh, provide some clarity on the uh, the growth and the staff cost and how should one set it? Yeah. Okay. So on in Q1, uh, uh, we had some uh, reversals. Uh, we had excess provisioning on bonus payouts, etc., which got reversed in uh, in in uh, Q1 because that is the time when actual payouts get decided. So we were carrying excess provisioning, and therefore that was uh, suppressed by about 25 to 30 crores. And uh, and for us, uh, we did employee hikes effective July 1st. So naturally, that kicker comes in the first quarter. Of, I mean, uh, in the July quarter, uh, which is the reason why July quarter is higher. Plus, we have we typically do actuarial provisions on our pension and gratuity liability. So there was some impact that came in 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 Q2. Uh, going forward, this kind of delta uh, will not be there. I think the delta will be much less, uh, largely reflective of the expansion in the employee base that will happen through branch banking and retail. One of the another reason is that when we do the transition, all the employees were absorbed over a period of time in Q1. Sorry. Now in Q2, the entire uh, cost has been absorbed. There is also additional cost. Going forward, that will be the normal uh, payout. Yeah, so I think just to clarify, then when the collections were done by a third party, it was coming as outsourced cost, as operating cost. When we took it over, it will be a mix of operating cost and our own employees because management of those agencies is done by in-house employees. So we had we added about uh, eight nine hundred employees in the in the collections across various levels in the card collection uh, division. Overall, the OPEX growth has been uh, much lesser than uh, uh, advanced growth and the profit growth, which we said that we will be able to achieve that, and we were able to reach that stage now. Okay. And sir, um, secondly, uh, the gross slippages in card at uh, 630, uh, would this be, let us say, more or less similar as to what the credit cost that we have shown in uh, BFL and others? I mean, uh, one can more or less uh, have the same proportion as what was in the chat in terms of credit. Yeah, 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 because in terms of uh, credit costs on cards, uh, because we provide 70% uh, on uh, MPA and 30% uh, in 120 days, uh, roughly within within the same quarter or within the one to two one next quarter, it will reflect roughly in the same proportion. Yes. Right. And so, sir, once this transition, I mean, the transition is finally over, right? I mean, as of uh, October, Correct. this is over. So then, uh, we should see the same, uh, let us say, 1.5 to 1.7 or 1.8%. Uh, that was there in the previous quarters. I mean, uh, as for the chart, we should be hitting that in third quarter itself, right? Is that a fair assessment? So, so uh, you know, the way it works is that uh, the first bucket, uh, if you look at uh, our own exit, and we have, I think given that in a in a in the chart uh, in our investor deck on slide 35. Uh, sorry, slide 45. Uh, sorry, slide 30, 35. Uh, the first bucket is clearly come back to what it was. Uh, or slightly better than what it was prior to transition. Uh, but bucket two, bucket three will take some more time. So I, I, I think the way I would put it is that we will see a material reduction in slippages in uh, Q3 or Q2. But for it to come back to uh, levels that we saw in, uh, in Q1 or Q4 of last year, probably will take one more quarter. And uh, lastly, on capital gen, so while we have done uh, capital optimization, uh, and hence the uh, capital consumption is slightly slower, uh, but any any thoughts on because there was some, uh, I mean, uh, have you received any intimation or you think there could be, uh, you know, possibility of higher risk rates uh, assigned to the MSI portfolio? 
So, so there has not been uh, anything right now for us specifically on that. But uh, having said that, given that uh, you know we've also heard communications having gone to banks, uh, if it is told to us, we will have to do that. So I won't be surprised if that happens. Uh, but right now, uh, nothing on that front. Uh, if if that happens, it will mean approximately 40 basis points on uh, on capital <coughs> as an impact. Right. Uh, understood, sir. Yeah. So that is it from my side, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Shubhran Shumishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, sir. Two questions. The first one is on the credit cards. I see uh, a higher uptick for a Bajaj plan uh, card. So, just want to understand the reason why would that. Mr. Mishra, your voice is not that Can you please check? Uh, hi, can you hear me now? Better. Please go ahead. Right. So, uh, two questions. The first one is on the credit cards. When I look at the Bajaj Finance portfolio, it shows a, a higher uptake. Just wanted to understand the reason. Is it because it is from deeper geographies or because of over leverage of customers? Uh, that's the first question. Second is uh, uh, when we look at the uh, microfinance portfolio, we mentioned, uh, I think, Rajasthan and certain other states where uh, things are improving. So, uh, just want to check what is the uh, 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 the collection, current collection efficiencies in those particular fields improve. Uh, so on the first one, uh, see BFL uh, uh, co-brand portfolio is, uh, is is spread out a little wider, and uh, uh, this will be uh, the slight increase that we've seen uh, on that portfolio is a combination of uh, multiple things, including uh, including leverage uh, uh, and so on and so forth. I don't think there is any single uh, specific trend that we can say. Having said that, we have over the last almost 9-12 months been trimming uh, on the uh, so-called experimentation that we keep doing in terms of looking at newer, uh, you know, newer experiments on doing business with lower rated or newer geographies. I think those we have trimmed quite materially. And, and therefore, impact of that will also start getting visible over the next uh, few quarters. Uh, and, and, and we would expect, therefore, that once the transition impact is over, uh, we should get back to levels that was prevalent, uh, like for non-DSL cards as well, uh, in the range of, let's say, 5 to 5.5% credit cost kind of an outcome, is what we are really targeting over the next couple of quarters, maybe two to three quarters. <clears throat> Um, uh, MFI, if I look at it, all the states which are contributing some 39 percent of my total stock, this comes around five to six uh, states. There is an improvement of somewhere around one percent more over that of what we saw at the lowest. The another state where uh, we are seeing that the issue is the uh, Bihar, which is having around 30 percent of our uh, book outstanding. Here. If it moves up to one percent again, that is where we are expecting it to reach by end of this uh, quarter. That will be in a position to tilt the balance towards. A favorable balance. So that's why you say that the exit of this quarter will see some uh, positioning back to 99% is what we're uh, looking at. The data, uh, the data makes us to believe that we'll be able to move to that. And major needle uh, is going to come from these uh, states which are already moved up by 1%, and they'll move up further. And another BR. All these three things put together, we'll be in a position to get back to that uh, near normal uh, position for the first bucket. Understood, sir. If I can just squeeze in one last question, sir, in the microfinance portfolio, uh, apart from over leverage, what are the other reasons? Because we've been hearing of uh, a large amount of attrition of the collection feet on street who do not want to go to the collection center, the uh, lower attendance at collection centers, uh, there's possibly some amount of fraud in the KYC or uh, in the vo uh, voter identity cards. So I yeah, just want yeah, to yeah. understand uh, various other reasons apart from over leverage, which is the larger narrative and microfinance. Yeah, I will ask uh, Kingshuk. Yeah, hi, uh, Kingshuk. Yeah. So uh, other than uh, over leverage, and over leverage also, I don't think is the only reason because of which uh, we see a little stress in collections today. The other point that you uh, mentioned, yes, correctly, I, we did see a blip in uh, uh, in our attrition rate uh, for uh, two months. Uh, especially in the month of uh, July, uh, we did see a blip. Uh, but we uh, quickly took corrective action. Uh, we aligned the incentive structures accordingly uh, so that people did make a little bit of uh, extra money. Uh, we gave in a little bit of hard, hardship allowance uh, as well. So 
uh, we've been able to bring it bring it back to our GAU normal uh, rates, uh, uh, which we were there in Q4 of uh, last year. So uh, blip was there for two months, which has been uh, managed. For the last two months, we have seen decline uh, in attrition rates. Uh, other than that, you mentioned uh, uh, center meeting, uh, uh, etc., and the uh, you know the culture of center meeting getting diluted, etc. Uh, I don't think there has been a big uh, gap in that, if you really ask me. Cul culture of center meeting has uh, been on slightly on the downward trend for the last uh, couple of years now, especially post COVID. Uh, nothing really has really spiked uh, from that particular sense. I think largely if we can maintain our people and the number of people in the ground, I think that is what is more important. And I think we've at least done that in the last two months. Uh, and hopefully going forward, uh, we should be able to maintain that and see uh, positivity in collections as well. Uh, specifically on the identity question, uh, in our case, while we've also heard of that, but in our case, 100% of our uh, disbursement is biometric. So we do not have any other uh, means of identity other than uh, other enabled biometric. Okay. Then I just wanted to add to what Jadid said. We do not, we not only take 100% biometric, we have a second KYC as well, which is mandatory. Uh, and uh, the primary being uh, uh, other biometric and the secondary uh, largely would depend on what is available with the customer. So we ensure that there is uh, two KYC documents from uh, customers. So uh, at least our portfolio doesn't really have this problem of, uh, you know, customer having multiple identity and multiple loans with uh, various, uh, uh, we have not seen that in our portfolio. In addition to what you said, uh, just to add a couple of points on center meeting, as a bank, we are not compromising a non conducting center meeting. If you look at it by the first 20 days, center meeting conduction is almost 100% as far as we are concerned. Maybe during this uh, period of uh, stress, the attendance might have dropped down, but now what we see in the last uh, fortnight or something like that, the data indicates that the attendance is not uh, dropping down anymore, the people are seen on the ground. Understood, sir. Fair assumption that the OPEX will remain heightened uh, because of these collection efforts. Uh, on uh, OPEX, you are saying? Uh, I think on uh, on uh, uh, you know our subsidiary being uh, RBL Finster, which accounts for 90% of our uh, portfolio. Uh, I think from a focus standpoint, yes, I would say collections will be a bigger focus, and if that means uh, uh, some more people on the ground and other initiatives, we will do that. Yes. So for the bank level, it will not materially move, but at the segment level, there, there will be some extra bulk we will be spending on the floor in order to get the money back, and which is worthwhile in my view that uh, worth investing. If it's rather than expensive, I will consider it an investment. Understood. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Naino Sandeep Joshi from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. My question is on the credit card book. Uh, so on slide 39, uh, we have given a breakup of civil scores for cards and codes. Uh, the portfolio with less than civil score of 680 is about 11%, and that seems to be causing the maximum pain. Uh, is my understanding correct, still here? So this is, uh, this is not at the time of origination. This is at the time of uh, the snapshot that is given. And typically, we, we will obviously see ultimate slippages uh, proportionately higher from uh, lower civil portfolio, yes. Uh, okay, understood. So the value outstanding for this portfolio will be similar, largely around 10, 11 percent? No, typically, the uh, outstandings would be lower here. So I would say marginally lower, but yes, uh, maybe a couple of percentages lower. Okay, and any corrective actions we want to take over here, we want to take down this proportion of this lower civil score customers, or we are okay with this? No, so if you look at our origination mix, uh, you know, it's very, very large, almost, uh, I think, 97, 98% would be in, uh, uh, in uh, 730 plus. Okay, uh, understood, understood. Uh, so, uh, so again on the credit card, so since you are mentioning that the majority of stress in credit cards is largely due to transition, so what proportion of these customers would be honoring their loans with other lenders? So that's a, that's something that we typically keep uh, tracking uh, as, a, as a part of collection strategy uh, as well. Uh, and we've generally seen both sides uh, to customer uh, in general, I'm saying, not, not specifically for transition, where customers 
default with others but pay with us or default with us and pay with others. Uh, I honestly don't have a specific number on the transition portfolio or if they are current with others, but uh, if that is the case, obviously, it, uh, you know, our ability to collect post uh, default uh, only gets better. Just Sandeep, uh, for your uh, information, one of the decisions what we have taken is this transition is not, it is not something which is because of uh, the customer becoming stressful, it is because of you have not reached in during the transition period or the efforts which you have put in have been slightly lesser because of the transition handshake and in this quarter, next quarter, the focus is going to be on them. So you will be able to see some uh, better recovery in those accounts wherever it is. If it is a delinquent portfolio, it will uh, bounce back to normal and if it is an MPA portfolio, the recovery will be higher. So this is the focus area we are working because it is not a, we have not identified this as a stress uh, to the customer. Okay, okay, I understand. Uh, so, so is it possible to say with a reasonable confidence that at least let's say 60 to 70 percent of these customers would be honoring their loans with other lenders or it is difficult to comment on this? No, no, I, I it's think difficult it's, to comment it's, because in the absence of data it will be too, because yeah. we haven't done that particular slide. Uh, anyway, we'll look yeah. at it as a point. Yeah, maybe we can take this offline and we can try and give the data, yeah. Sure, okay. Well, my second question is on the microfinance book. Uh, I'm not sure if we have shared the data with respect to uh, unique RBL customers and maybe RBL plus one lender plus two and maybe plus three. No, no, we haven't shared that data. Uh, approximately 40-45% of our customers are only RBL. And if you look at RBL plus four or RBL greater than that or two lakh leverage, uh, broadly 18, eight to ten percent would be in that bucket. Here also the point is gone up uh, for the simple reason that at the time of sourcing they might not because our dear uh, Indian doesn't permit that to be a I mean uh, perfect. It will not be sanctioning it. It will not go through. But subsequent to the borrowing from us, these borrowers uh, we have very <laughs> or uh, literally no control for them to borrow from elsewhere. This number has gone up only because of that. Sure, understood. And maybe my last question is on the ROA. Uh, I heard that uh, you have kind of maintaining your guidance for the next year ROA about, let's say, 1.3% for the financial year 26. But for financial 25, uh, 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 can we guide uh, for any number? Sorry, for the current financial year? Yes. No, for fiscal 26 years, we continue to stick to that 1.3 to 1.4 exit ROA uh, uh, oh, okay. guidance. Yeah. Uh, uh, you are asking for guidance for this current year, is what you are asking? Yes. Uh, yes, for current financial year. Yeah. No, I guess we are, we are in a slightly uncertain environment and therefore uh, I would say that it is, it is, uh, it is harder to predict. Uh, suffice to say, obviously, we will be well below what we, we were wanting to be in the 1.1 zone. We are not going to be uh, close to that at all. Uh, Sandeep, uh, keeping all the current uh, the stress point, what we have been explaining very clearly, one is due to the transition, other one because there are only two parts. All other businesses are uh, positive. I would like you to focus on our projection of 2026 and then stick there, and uh, that's what we are working on today. Because instead of giving a cluster, we wanted to have a complete... Uh, the transition issues are fixed up and we move on to the number what we said for gated for 2026. In fact, we've uh, tried to in a in a in a in a way we can communicate. We've given that information in slide 22 as to how our various businesses stack up, and uh, clearly the current I mean while wholesale has improved over the last uh, three years quite materially. Uh, similarly, our new businesses in secured retail where we are investing has uh, improved from a higher loss to a lower loss. Uh, we've obviously seen a material reduction in uh, in returns in our unsecured businesses uh, in H1 as compared to the previous two years. And I think the moment that reverses, uh, which 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 should likely happen uh, I, Q4, Q, Q1 onwards, uh, we should be coming back to trend profitability. Uh, understood. That helps. Uh, thank you. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the local line of Gao Shi Wang from Consul. Please go ahead. Hey, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just some data keeping questions. So for the 618 crores of uh, uh, provision charges in the PNL, do you know, break it out into uh, what's the provision or NPL? What's the standard asset provision, and is there any changes in you know, any other form of provision beyond investment, etc.? Uh, so you are looking at a split between 
advanced provisioning and any other provisioning, right? That is right. Yes. Uh, just give us a minute. Yeah, we have advanced Sorry, can you hear us? No worries. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. Uh, and um, just on the no, no. other provision, I thought it was high. Sorry, uh, if you can hear us, we are uh, ready to share the data. We have uh, on uh, on standard advances, we would have uh, taken a provision of about 10 crores, and uh, the, pretty much the rest of the provisioning is on uh, NPA. And uh, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just looking at your slide 59. There is a uh, you know negative 44 crores on the other provisioning. So just wondering what's that, please. Forty-four crores. Yes, yes, yes. So we 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 have uh, uh, we have uh, sold uh, we have sold a portfolio of security receipts that we had, and uh, that released certain provisioning for us. We were carrying provisioning more than. Uh, the fair value of those results, and we sold that, and there was a reduction in provisioning of uh, approximately 40 crores because of that, 400 million. Got it, understand. And uh, uh, can I have your uh, MFI provisioning policy, please, i.e., you know, a 90 day, how many percent is provided, and by how many days it's 100% provided, please? Yeah, so we provide 25% uh, every quarter. Uh, the quarter in which it becomes NPA is 25%, and subsequently every quarter uh, we add 25%. So in four quarters, we provide 100%. Got it, thank you. And lastly, just on uh, capital, um, how should we think about our capital positioning? So in, in the unfortunate case that RBI ask us to you know increase risk rates on the MFI plus the usual uh, you know capital consumption uh, on a quarterly basis you know how should we think about capital raises and our own growth from here so uh, as I said uh, if, if the one-time impact on MFI would be about uh, 40 basis points uh, and I don't think it materially changes the consumption because incremental growth in MFI is is not really material uh, and, and therefore, uh, we would typically look to burn around 20 basis points, give or take, per quarter. Uh, uh, we, would, we, would, we would, irrespective of whether MFI uh, risk rate increases for us or not, and which we don't know right now, uh, we, would, we would look to uh, at least look at the next 12 to 15 months uh, before we raise capital. We should be, our bottom threshold on uh, core, core equity tier one should be in the uh, maybe 12 and a half to 13 percent range. Sorry, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Pota from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, am I audible, sir? Yes. Yeah, yeah go ahead. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, so just I wanted to understand now, uh, you are sounding now positive that things should improve both on the credit card uh, side as well as on, on the MFI side, which led to increased uh, provisioning and credit cost in this quarter. Uh, so so if, if I have to see at the company level, um, how do we see uh, credit cost in coming quarters? And overall, for this entire year, what sort of, uh, um, I mean, guidance range we can look at in terms of uh, company level credit cost? So for the year, we should be, uh, you know, anywhere between 2.5 to 3% range or 2.6 to 3% range, depending on how soon things come back to normalcy. But but, but uh, is it safe to say that this quarter, second quarter, the kind of provisioning we have seen is that the peak, or uh, or or we can we can see a higher peak? Uh, I mean, going forward. So so the way I would look at it is that we have passed the peak on slippages and cards. We may not have passed the peak on slippages in microfinance, and microfinance uh, because of the provisioning policy will mean that we will keep providing 25% for the same quarter and the previous quarter catch up and so on and so forth. So I would say, uh, yes, I could probably say provisioning is peaked, but uh, in terms of credit costs. But uh, I, I don't think we can say that credit costs will sharply fall off from here quickly. 
So we will probably take some time before it comes off. Uh, either we can expect a flattish kind of a credit call going forward or provisioning, or maybe a slightly downward trend. I mean, that would be a fair thing to you. Yeah, and, and then in Q4 we should start seeing it come down. Yes. Uh, fair enough. I um, I got it. I think that would be from my side. All the way best. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal sir from the city. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, so uh, the first question was last time. I think uh, you indicated that this spillover impact due to collection transition could be. Like it was like last quarter, it was 60 odd crores, and you said like there would be some spillover which would come through uh, in next quarter as well. But eventually, when we look at the number on the credit card, it seems to be significantly higher. Okay, so was there any other element apart from uh, this collection transitioning, or maybe the collection transitioning has given much higher pain than what we anticipated during the last earnings call? I, I I I don't think we I don't think cost. yeah I think we said that there was a cost increase oh. which was there in collections because there was a uh, you know handover where we will we will we will have some inefficiency I I don't think uh, okay it is fair to say that in our own analysis we were not budgeting for uh, this much of a transition cost due to provisioning but I don't think there was a guidance of 50 crores Kunal. Uh, sorry okay. if that was a confusion in your mind. Uh, but but having said that, yes, the uh, the amount of slippages that we have seen due to transition is more than what we anticipated internally. Yeah, and largely when we look at on a sequential basis compared to like say 400 odd crores the last quarter, gross slippage in credit card and 630 odd crores this quarter, is it largely that entire incremental delta is due to collection or uh, maybe there is an element of uh, industry-wide pain and uh, some stress which you had seen in your portfolio, increased stress in uh, Q2 in particular? So, Kunal, the way, uh, so one can never be perfect on this answer, but the data point that we are relying on is that if you look at the yes. non-transition portfolio, that is not really got impacted at all. In fact, the slippages are, are slightly lower. So if it was an industry-wide phenomenon, we would have seen uh, some deterioration uh -huh. there. So, so therefore, we are kind of concluding that this is uh, largely transitional. Uh, that's, that's the data point that we have to share, yeah. Okay. And transitioning is now entirely complete. So that yeah. uh, delta which was there in this quarter, that yeah. should not at all repeat in Q3. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so just to clarify again, transition got completed in July on July 31st. Uh, what we are also giving on uh, uh, in the credit card section on slides is that if we look at early delinquency uh, trends, slide 35, we we are already seeing the turn in early delinquency back to uh, levels which were there well before transition. And that slide, that that early delinquency is a is a leading indicator of what will happen over the next three to six months. So we are very, very confidently saying that we will have a material reduction in slippages in cards. It, it, it may not come back to the level that we want it to be because the because whatever uh, whatever happened in August will also flow while September is looking very good. Whatever happened in July will also flow because there will be uh, you know that 90 day. But but I think there will be a material reduction and you know as we go into Q4 we should be trending towards fair amount of normal fee set as paribus. Got it. And uh, second, sorry, mm. yeah. Mm. Uh, just to carry forward with what uh, they did said, one of the positive things what we can observe this slide five is that is the early trending of this collection has uh, increased than what it was it used to be before this transition itself. That itself is one of the leading indicator makes us believe that uh, our uh, collection efficiency is improving. Sure. And uh, uh, lastly, in terms of the SMA trend which we look at, okay, so say uh, SMA uh, 0 being almost more than 3 odd percent, SMA 1, 2.45, and as you indicated that maybe Bihar largely got impacted, which is your largest state, and got impacted particularly the, maybe in the last week of September. Uh, so uh, should we see maybe a relatively higher stress maybe compared to what we saw in Q2? You indicated that at least on credit card you are comfortable, but on MFI can it deteriorate further because the number seems to be much higher on the SMA trends and there might be a flow through plus 25% every quarter provisioning would also continue. So in terms of slippages, Kunal, uh, yes, I would expect it to be higher than uh, current, current quarter. 
uh, and and then we will expect that to start trending down from uh, from Q4 onwards. Uh, and credit costs, uh, as you said, is a catch-up of 25% for that quarter and the previous quarter was 25. So yes, within microfinance, we will expect credit costs to go up. Uh, within cards, it will come down because cards 70% get provided the same quarter. So when checkages come down, we should start seeing uh, credit costs coming down in cards. Okay. Okay. And lastly, in terms of the clarification earlier, maybe have you indicated that by FY26 we could even be like 1.4, 1.5, and now maybe we are getting that down to almost like 1.3 odd percent. Though this seems to be more like a, a transitioning cost, and uh, otherwise structurally there doesn't seem to be much impact. Or we are actually lowering the guidance for FY26 ROA to 1.3. Yeah, so uh, uh, I would say uh, we are at 1.4 exit. We are we are now saying that we'll be in that 1.3 to 1.4 zone. Some of that uh, is coming from the current uh, mindset of what we are going. Otherwise, uh, as we have kind of put it in slide uh, 21, uh, our non-cards, non-MFI business, which is wholesale and secured retail, has seen uh, improvement in uh, PBT ROAs as slightly better than planned uh, and and you know uh, we expect that to kind of continue uh, so this is a little bit of a combination of uh, current circumstances more than anything else yeah but here we are not changing that in the guidance like it still shows like 1.4 1.5 but we are indicating it could be 1.3 for it correct correct yes yes okay okay got it okay thank you yeah Next question is from the line of Shailesh Kanani from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my other questions are answered. Just one question from my side. Uh, so uh, in wholesale yields, uh, there has been a sequentially drop by around two bits, and uh, year on year as well, it has been flattish. In spite of uh, we be concentrating on mid corporate and SMEs. So where can we when can we see some uptick on the wholesale side in terms of yields? Uh, so this is uh, this is there will be some noise around uh, foreign currency uh, assets as well. Broadly, we are uh, looking at uh, wholesale yields uh, stabilizing, and now uh, even though we will see a relatively better interest rate environment, uh, we will expect this to kind of hold steady or marginally improve as we uh, increase as we go forward. But again, the the other important point on wholesale that we want to bring out is that a lot of uh, income is actually free income and liability based income. It's a very powerful source for current accounts uh, and flow businesses. So uh, asset related uh, uh, income and therefore contribution to uh, ROA, PBT ROA for that segment is actually barely about 30% or so. Check slide 29. 21. Slide 29. Yeah. This one or two percent split you see now, it will be uh, it will be intermediary one, and uh, I would like you to wait for that uh, year to come uh, where we'll be able to catch up in two quarters out. Yeah, so uh, the reason I was asking you is because our commentary in the past has been that there will be some improvement as we are concentrating at lower ticket sizes. So I was just wondering when we can expect that. Here, I just wanted to look at the profitability statement that is at 21. No, but Shailesh, uh, honestly, it's difficult to predict uh, quarter on quarter. Uh, attempt is that on a on a secular basis, we should we should try and take it up. Uh, as long as the interest rate environment does not dramatically change. I mean, nine months down the line, 12 months down the line, these rates will be down because that is what the uh, ambient interest rate would be. Uh, but otherwise, structurally, we are still uh, wanting to move towards the better yielding uh, businesses. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Karana from Ank Capital Ventures. Please go ahead. No, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and answering all the questions patiently. Uh, most of my questions have been answered. I have just two questions. Uh, so, sir, if you look at the other loans category, which I think may be comprised of gold loans, etc., so it saw good growth in the last quarter. Uh, so that is Q125 versus uh, Q424. But this quarter, it has been mostly flat or slightly negative. So is it something related to compliance that we are centering that down? Or uh, is it uh, so, uh, 
you know that was a, a, a little bit of a short term transaction that was done and uh, uh, that will slowly unwind itself so i don't think we will see growth in that segment whatever you are going to degrowth there that will get into the growth of the respective segment that is what the flow is instead of going for the short term related uh, uh, exposures we will be going for the long term exposures which is going to be better yield okay so that was a one off and we won't be seeing any major growth there right correct yeah okay sir uh, next question on the operating expenses so while uh, i think you have indicated uh, and i think the also has come down by 150 basis points uh, but if you look at uh, you know the breakup so the business acquisition cost is the one which has seen about 100 crores decline uh, so uh, what is this comprised of and is it that you know you are chasing you are not aggressively chasing growth and that is why it has declined or is it the steady state the current quarter uh, and it will keep declining from here onwards no so this is a this is a combination of uh, largely business acquisition costs across uh, cards uh, mfi retail etc and i think uh, we will we, i don't think this degrows anymore this will again uh, start growing uh, as uh, uh, as we progress for the year uh there has been a fair amount of cut in the co brand partner payout that we do given the environment that we've seen in terms of profitability uh so that that's part of the reason for this and and i don't think that is structural we will uh, start seeing some in- increase in these costs again as we go forward uh, so this current uh, cost to income is again an aberration and uh, going forward in this financial year it might increase slightly right we will hold it at the same level because it is a combination of your MA, uh, okay. income as well as there are the cost it is not only cost factor alone the income is uh, which we already explained to you that it is not going to hold it will keep going and you saw this uh, the income slightly dip because of that uh, i'm reduced disbursement in microfinance it is going to come back we already started uh, by increasing the microfinance disbursement the disbursement you know to peak the level what we have been doing approximately 1000 crores per month it takes some time but now it is is bottomed out in the last month and the previous month that is moving improving from there on so there will be contribute the counter contribution to the increase uh, what i would like you to take note is that our the, the growth of uh, the opex which was in the range of around 30 30% earlier now there is growth drop down to 13 now it will be in the range of 13 to 15% so to that extent there will be because in operating uh, uh investment related things will take place or your uh, stopping and an expansion so it will be 13 to 15% growth will be there in opex and which will be uh, compensated of the increase in the income so it will uh, cost income will come down or it will be holding it yeah so i mean i would i would just say that don't hold us to this uh, every quarter uh, no, directionally we should we should be moving better that makes sense sir. so i think uh, operating leverage playing out is visible if you look uh, you know financial year 23 24 i was just you know asking about this specific quarter because the dip was a uh, uh, slightly higher so one okay. last data keeping question uh, now or maybe you know uh, offline can you share the exit uh, collection efficiencies for the month of september june and march for mfi i think september has already been shared 97.1 uh, for the uh, yeah, march for mfi on uh, slide Forty-five, I think, for the first month collection efficiency starting Jan, page forty-eight. The difference between September and ninety-seven and a half. So it's got that trend, both of SMA as well as collection. So all the way from Jan twenty-four on a monthly basis till September twenty-four. Slide forty-eight. You can take a look at it later. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Shukla from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity. The contingency provisions that you are carrying, when and under what scenario are you likely to utilize it? As and when we utilize it, we will naturally disclose it to you. But conceptually, Manish, uh, uh, I think the, uh, the thinking would be that once we see uh, the pain is done and dusted with, and we are seeing we are confident of uh, on what portfolio uh, things coming back to normal that is when we will want to possibly use it uh, this will of course be subject to board approvals and so on and so forth so uh, can't really predict this but conceptually that's how we will look at it so the 2.6 to 3% number for folio credit cost that you suggested that doesn't assume any utilization from this no 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 
Okay, sir. Uh, for the second half of this year, how should one think about loan growth and margins? That interest margins and loan growth. Yes, yeah, so the loan growth is concerned. The primary focus of the increase of accelerated growth is going to take place in our retail sector, and uh, which is uh, revenue accretive growth plus uh, it is going to be margin accretive growth. We have done around 24 percent what we have done. If you take only the few uh, housing loan, then it is nearing the 50 plus, and uh, this will definitely go back uh, to the high 30s. In our on the high 20s, in the range of uh, low 30s. In the respect of our uh, wholesale, we have already given our uh, thing. And the only thing where we wanted to move up is our microfinance. Microfinance will uh, catch up for this quarter, and by next quarter, it will be able to get to the level what it normally does. It. So um, uh, safely, you can say that exit will be the percentage what we have uh, assumed around 18-20%. Uh, yeah, Manish, on margins, I think if we if I were to answer this in a stable environment, largely dependent on interest rate nuances, I think my answer would have been a little more, uh, uh, let's say, clear. I think we are also in this environment of a, you know, high slippage environment in one of the two businesses, Q2 uh, credit card this time, maybe in next time microfinance, and, and therefore it's a little harder to say. But uh, but I would say. Uh, Maybe a marginal downside, if at all, otherwise flattish for Q3 before we start seeing improvements. Uh, okay. And uh, given the volatility that we've seen in slippages and debt costs in MFI, any rethink in terms of the extent to which you want to stay, uh, keep MFI as part of your overall book? I mean, not just now, over the last five, seven years, uh, whatever yeah. your experience has been. Yeah, yeah Manish, so, sorry. Yeah, Manish, you know that this is a... Yes, I a business, you, you will definitely see a downturn as far as this. If you are able to predict precisely and you are ready with a contingent buffer, there is absolutely a great business to do with. And uh, I don't think that this is a business seriously. But however, looking at the balance sheet, we have already made it very clear that we will be in the range of 8 and 9 percent of the balance sheet is what this book is going to hold. And we will continue to be maintaining in that particular position. And all these temporary blips, I think we have uh, ability to face and do it. And the purchase is a very good profitable one. Even this kind of temporary blips is not going to alter its ability to be remain profitable. Yeah, Manish, and I think, uh, you know, from a, from a priority sector lending sub-segment, yeah. agri uh, and weaker sections and small and marginal farmer kind of difficult sub-targets, I think this is a very useful product and therefore uh, that 8 to 9 percent range is, 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 is where we will, at least for the, let's say, the next 12, 18 months is what the thought process is. Okay. It's still a PSL is more costly than maintaining uh, MFI, so it's better to maintain MFI. Got it. Okay. And the last question, slide 35, where you given a uh, collection for early bucket and credit cost. Uh, the early bucket collection is not really a good predictor of credit cost, is it? No, no, it is. It is. It is. It is very, uh, very distinctly uh, 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 an Im very important input. Typically, in uh, the, the 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 delta in the resolutions after that impact less because this collection uh, efficiency or whatever this resolution is on the entire you know, 20,000, 22,000 crore book, right? Uh, assuming, uh, you know, 10, 20 basis points change, this that has a material impact. After this, the impact uh, is less. Even a 10, 15 percent uh, reduction in resolution is, is less impactful because it's on a much, much small, it's like on a few hundred crores or a 800 crores or so. So early delinquency is very, very critical. Uh, so if you look at if you look at Q1, uh, the, uh, the uh, efficiency dipped to 95.6 as compared to 96.2. That is effectively resulted in that the kind of flow that we saw. Okay, fair point. All right, thank you. Those were my questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raja from Novavam Wealth Research. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, first question is, uh, any guidance on the collection uh, or you can so share any data and the performance of Bajaj and non-Bajaj credit card. So we are given this uh, details on page uh, 35, 35, where we have split the portfolio into the BFL co-brand and uh, uh, you know the non-BFL co-brand portfolio. Two linear graphs. Let's say graphs clearly shows you that how it is uh, performing. And any credit cost guidance on the uh, credit card business, sir? 
So currently we are running high, uh, and I think we are our uh, uh, you know our model uh, uh, trade cost we should run uh, is in the five to broadly five to six percent range. Five to five and a half is where we will target. Uh, currently we are running uh, above that. I think we will take uh, at least two quarters to come back to this level. Uh, so any uh, PNL impact on sell down of 250 crore of uh, PL this quarter? We sold cards portfolio actually of uh, 400 odd crores. I think we realized about 15, 15 crores. This was uh, obviously a fully provided and a fully written up pool. So. Asa, the lastly on the any dividend payout from the subsidiary company to the parent that I think we have last quarter. No, nothing. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That is so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Dama from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, it's basically my question is on the staff cost. So this quarter we said that there were higher payouts. Uh, there were I think increased uh, collection costs also because I think you have hired a lot of employees. So how do you break that into uh, what is the kind of payout that you have done and how much the cost will come down in this third quarter? No, no. So Anand, cost, uh, employee cost will not come down. Employee cost will not come down. So the bigger reason is that Q, if you're looking at a Delta Q2 over Q1, Q1 had the benefit of almost 30, 35 crores of release due to various factors. Uh, and, and, and then you've seen a, 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 a two reasons why costs have gone, three reasons why costs have gone up uh, in Q, Q2 in addition to the reduction in Q1. So if you remove the 30, 35 crore uh, Delta impact, then the rest of the increase is about, I think, 30 crores or so. And, and that is a combination of uh, increase in uh, collection steam, which was a uh, significant increase of about eight nine hundred people, which came in, and which would have reduced cost from a vendor standpoint, because otherwise this was going as a vendor payout. Uh, then we had uh, obviously we have uh, increase in uh, in uh, salary hikes for us come into effect from July first for the entire bank. So that was the uh, second uh, reason for the bump, which will of course not repeat till next July. Uh, and, and the third reason was we had a slightly some impact on gratuity and pension liability, which uh, in the range of seven, eight crores, which was through actual liability, actual valuations that we do every six months. Now the growth from here on will be, uh, will be more uh, related to normal uh, expansion of people, which is not going to be uh, anything material. I mean, this will go up on a normal 3 to 4% a year type, 3 to 4% sequentially type, uh, assuming a 10-15% increase annually. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And secondly, on your credit card, you said that the separate obviously will gradually normalize uh, in the credit card. But uh, what about the collection of the loans which have actually become delinquent in the second quarter because of the financial? Yeah, so I think we will expect to have better uh, recoveries and resolutions from this uh, portfolio over the next six months. But ultimately, once a card slips, uh, typically recovery is in that 15-20% or 10-15%, and maybe it goes up a little bit because this is uh, this portfolio was it not necessarily only because of a customer issue; it is also because of transition issue. So we will expect a slightly better performance on. Uh, post 90, post 120 recovery, uh, which will help cushion the trade costs. But the uh, accounts which actually turn delinquent in second quarter, you expect that to uh, recover back in fourth quarter? I mean, if it is primarily only because of transition. Right? No, no, no. I don't think we can say that. I think once something slips, slips uh, if, if we were recovering X, we will probably recover 2X, but it's not going to be anywhere close to 100%. Changes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashley Sonja from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hi team, good afternoon. Uh, just a couple of questions. Firstly on the MFI book, uh, uh, how, how is the trend now in flows from the current bucket to the SME bucket? Has that flow at least shown any improvement recently? 
See the MFI in the month of September, we are really up to that, except in the last three days, we saw that it was just going to uh, better, uh, better collection. And the last three or four days, uh, there was a reduction in terms of the holidays and uh, I don't know, weekends. That we just, we, we just believed our uh, belief that it is going to reach out. But the early first 15 days of this but, uh, month makes us to believe that it is just going up. This is the overall portfolio. In respect of the 39 percent, which is said around eight states, we have seen 1 percent improvement in last one month over what it was, when it just went down to 97 as an average. In these states it went up to 98. So the BR is a state where we anticipate that it is going to increase by another 1 percent during this particular month. And uh, which was disrupted, which might have improved or played back in last month because of floods in that particular, or in 12 districts uh, where we are operating got uh, impacted. This is likely to come back. Maybe it's uh, too early to predict everything. Maybe by the end of the month, we will be able to say that whether the bigger is also able to add up to the additional 1%. However, uh, the team on the field is uh, confident of the fact that we may reach near 99 by the end of December in the sort of overall collection. When our, uh, the normal collection is in the range of 99.2, which we picked it. So this is what it is. Uh, so, if I understand correctly, uh, you expect the month of October to be better than September on collection efficiency, which means that your, your expectation that 3Q slippage is being worse than 2Q is purely because the because of flow from the flow. Correct, it. correct, correct, correct. Correct. It's a fair assumption. While, while the flow from uh, current bucket to SMS yeah, is yeah. to decline. Is that correct? Yeah. Correct, correct. Okay, okay. And just uh, a couple of policy related questions. Uh, for your MFI customer who has fallen into NPA, do you have any cooling period or a waiting period for him before he becomes eligible for a loan renewal? So, we, we do not give any loan to a customer who has turned even 10 day delinquent uh, in one, one DPD and so ever, ever DPD is what? Ever. So, yeah, so forget NPA, yeah. I don't think we, uh, we don't give uh, that at all. Uh, and uh, even office performance, if it is, you know, more than 10 delinquency or something, then we don't give, uh, we don't disclose the loan. So, yes. so the question of giving loan to an NPA customer, yes. uh, even after five years, doesn't arise. So, uh, and we also give only one loan per customer. Uh, so, we don't have multiple roles running to any customer. Over and above, we also have the household assessment also. If anybody in the household is also an element, he will not be getting it. If he wants to have a head, it's, I mean, God will be pretty... Yeah, just to add, uh, even in a second cycle customer, a customer would possibly pay us uh, on the EMI. And in the family, if there is a uh, deroll, which is visible from the bureau, we would not lend to the same customer in the second cycle as well. So I understand that you do not lend to any customer who has fallen into NPA, uh, but just in case that customer comes back and repays his dues to become current again, um, would then he become eligible for a renewal? We, we have a normalization period of 6 to 12 months, wherein he suppose he has become complete. 12, 12 months. 12 months, huh? 12 months, then he will be eligible for getting it again. If, if he has repaid the entire amount, it is not the question of write-off and things like that. She will be uh, She will be She. <laughs> In the credit card portfolio, you have mentioned this early bucket collection. Uh, can you define that term for us? What is the numerator and denominator? So, uh, numerator uh, would be uh, people who have paid the statement which was due, and denominator, uh, denominator will be all uh, due for all statements, uh, for all customers. Demand. Demand, effectively. Yes. Current month demand, sorry. Current month demand and current month payment. payment. Numerator is current month received, denominator is current month demand. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nathan Agarwal from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Two questions I have. First is around the deposit growth. We have had a very strong quarter on deposits. Even the star growth is very strong. So what has really driven this and how, how sustainable this growth is? See, as far as deposit growth is concerned, the minimum given is between 18 to 20. We will be able to sustain. The way we also explained that the current account is the flow of the I mean, corporates during that quarter end, where it just reaches around uh, 
12,000, 13,000 crores, which is average is top somewhere around 9,000, 10,000 crores. But the SAR growth, yes, we are able to add on to the SAR growth and uh, we will be able to maintain that growth. I'll ask Deepak to give you more data if he has uh, anything else. Uh, see, apart from what uh, MD Sir has said, we have taken some corrective uh, steps also. Like we are now focusing on branch profitability, which is again a, a proxy for uh, deposit growth. We, are, we have also the, categorized the branches into different categories and the RMs are uh, uh, focusing on sort of enhancing the category of their branches. All these are aiding. I am telling, apart from the quantum, even the quality is improving. And uh, as uh, uh, communicated by MD sir, uh, we will continue to maintain this 18 to 20 percent growth year on year. Okay. And uh, second question I have is on the LCR. Uh, now this quarter we had a such a strong deposit growth quality, as you were saying, is also getting better. But LCR has dropped sequentially. So what has changed? Any change in the runoff factor that we have incorporated uh, this quarter? No, no, no. I think LCR is a daily average uh, uh, position, and uh, it is a it is a function of daily average inflows and outflows. There has been no change in uh, in either assumptions or uh, formula. Uh, if at all, I think the uh, if you look at outflow, and I think there will be disclosures of LCR on the website uh, 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 already. Uh, the outflow as a percentage of total deposits is also holding steady to marginally coming down because. Uh, as you do more retail deposits, you will have a lesser runoff factor. So, uh, the LCR is a daily average for the month, for, for the quarter actually, on a daily average basis, whereas what you are seeing on deposit is effectively, while there is definite improvement in deposits, but that is a, a particular day-over-day -day comparison. Okay, okay, got it. And uh, on the employee side, uh, if I see like uh, this quarter, we have added like four, more than 1,400 odd employees. This is like 10% of our outstanding employee base. Even the last quarter was equally strong in terms of net employee addition. So what is the strategy? Which business functions are you really hiring for? Because the one of the employee intensive businesses like NFI is going slow in the first month, right from the first half. So what is the strategy okay. here? And yeah. Yeah, you know, Nitin, I think this particular quarter was clearly driven by the fact that we in-housed the collections from uh, the co-brand partner uh, group entity. Basically, uh, collections in cards is a combination of employees and uh, agencies. To manage those agencies, we need employees. So naturally, uh, we almost hired 900 employees in the collection vertical, uh, which otherwise was housed with uh, the vendor or the partner or whatever. Right, so that itself is a largest contribution for the sequential growth in employees for Q2. Okay. Other than that, our growth in employees is largely going to be driven by branches. As we expand branches, we expand retail sales. Uh, that that would be the primary driver for employee growth. Got it. And just lastly, a data driven question: uh, interest reversal number this quarter, if you can share that. Interest reversal number for this quarter would be in the 120 crore range. 120, yeah. Okay, and next quarter when you say credit cost will be ballpark similar, so this number will remain broadly. Credit cost for next quarter, yeah, should be similar or slightly lower, yes. The card is definitely lower. Yeah, card would definitely be lower. Definitely lower. As far as the MFI is concerned, we're looking at the end of this month will be a clear indication. But going forward, we are of the opinion that it will be slightly, it cannot be the same level what it is. It will be more than what it is today. But it will not uh, peak. That's what we feel. Anyway, we have to wait for uh, this month and data to showcase that. Got it. Thank you so much. Thanks. The next question is from the line of Anurag Manthi from Augsburg Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, just one clarification regarding uh, you know the use of uh, contingent, uh, contingency provisions potentially. Um, uh, I mean, how does that impact maybe your uh, the, the uh, transition that you are looking to do for ECL eventually? Um, I, I mean, if you use these provisions, won't that impact the transition uh, there? Uh, no, so uh, I think the contingent provision uh, was uh, if if we did not have if we did not have the current uh, let's say heightened uh, slippage challenge that we are currently seeing, then the contingent provisioning would have.
satisfied potentially the transition to ECL uh, if that was applicable from April 1st next year. Uh, if, the ECL, if, we, if we theoretically use contingent provisioning during the current fiscal and if we have to transition to ECL April 1st if that guideline comes effective, uh, then uh, we will have to take the uh, entire thing through network, uh, which anyway would have been the case. Got it. Understood. Uh, and just one clarification on uh, your loan growth guidance for this year, I might have missed that. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, your loan growth guidance for this year, uh, I think I missed that. Yes, yeah, um, see, maybe a temporary <laughs> period, but we will be in a position to go back to that, uh, the data is what we have given so far. 18 to 20 percent is what we have added. Sorry, but uh, given currently your 15 and, uh, you know, cars and SIs are having these headwinds, do you still see 18 to 20 possible for this year, or that's more like FI26? As I told you, that microfinance is just uh, moving up as far as is concerned. They'll be able to. Uh, reach out to the position maybe by end of this quarter uh, so that they will be able to contribute for the exit. Got it. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rick and Shah from IFL. Please go ahead. Uh, my question got answered. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We now conclude the Q&A session. If you have any further questions, please contact RBL Bank Limited via email at ir at rblbank.com. On behalf of RBL Bank Limited, we thank you for joining us. We have now disconnected lines.